Good evening. Thank you for joining House of Many Masses Global Prosthetic Conference Call. Today is November 24th, the day before Thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Tonight we're going to go ahead and get started. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take another step forward. Come on, you're in the new season. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's a new, new season. No Hallelujah. It's a new season. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah. Do it, Lord. Do a new thing. Yes, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you, we glorify you. Yes, God. Do a new thing. Woo. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. for me. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Father, it's a new season for me. Hallelujah. God, we just declare and decree your word. Hallelujah. We declare and decree that it is true, that it will not uh, return unto us void. Hallelujah. But that it, it shall be done, Father, because you are just and faithful. To see it through, to see a work in me finished. Hallelujah. You are the author and finisher of our faith. So, Father, we know that he that begins a work in us, a good work will be completed. Hallelujah, Jesus. So, Father, as we embark on thing, on this Thanksgiving holiday, Father, we just want to say thank you. We just want to tell you thank you for bringing us through. Father, I know some of us know some people who did not make it out of 2021, did not make it out of 2020, did not make it out of 2019, and yet here we are. So, Father, what you know? What did we do to be privileged? What did we do to still get more time? And so, Father, we just don't take it lightly. We don't just walk around prideful like it's ours, it's our portion, Father, because, no, you, you go and prepare a place for us. So, Father, on tonight, we thank you. We ask that you impart to us on tonight, that there be an impartation after tonight's teaching, oh God, that you will wake us out of our sleep in the midnight hour and you will impart these gifts, these anointings, these mantles on us for these end time harvests. In your name, Jesus, we pray and we thank you. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. 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 So at this today... <laughs> I was um just trying to figure out what God wanted me to do, hallelujah, because there's so many different things that God is showing me, and I'm just trying to put it, write it all down, organize it, and and just go in his in his order, 
And so as I was embarking, I said, well, Lord, did you want me to share anything right now? And he said, well, no, what I want you to do is set the foundation to share. And so what he means by that is we're living in a time, y'all, where um, God is doing some new stuff. He's he's imparting some new anointings. He's he's revealing some end time things. People have not been dreaming the way they've been dreaming lately. Um, certain things have been amplified. You have never been more frustrated, more terrified, more lonely, more anxious. All these things like you've been in this season, and that's because there's some unusual warfare going on. There's some unusual um, things being released. But not only that, there are some things being released to us by God to to know a thing, to have understanding in all things, and to have um, divine wisdom in, in, in times. And so tonight, that's what we're going to just be, we're going to, uh, I'm going to be in this word, we're going to trot through it, we're going to run through it, run down it, we're going to be all up in the mix, all up in this word, because there are certain uh, revelators in the Bible that the Holy Spirit revealed revelation knowledge to concerning the end times. And in particular, there was a group of, um, there was a tribe of people called the tribe of Ishakar. Um, and there are several others that we're going to talk about tonight because I believe that God is doing something um, in force, not just single anointed, but he's doing something in, in force. And so there were a couple of tribes with, with specific strategic skills that I believe God is imparting on us today in 2021. I, I do believe that before 20, 2022 is over, that there's going to be a lot of impartations that we're going to receive. And, and these are some of them. Um, and so one of the things about the tribe of Ishakar, well, first of all, before I get into that, um, there's some things that I want to, you know, clear up, clarify, because there are some things that people aren't particularly sure about. So first of all, what's the signs of the times? What does that even mean? What 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 is that? Where do we even get that from? Um, you know, how who where do we get that from? You know, what is that talking about? What is that referring to? And so the the anointing of Ishakar or the or um, the tribe of Ishakar were known for the signs of the times. They were known for having skill and understanding and what God was saying and what God was speaking. And though there's not many scriptures about them, every time you see them, they were doing something phenomenal. But it was phenomenal not because it was some spectacular thing that was going on that they were part of. It was phenomenal because the people that they were paired up with weren't the people's choice. Thank you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> they weren't the people's choice, right? Um, so in the book of uh, Judges, chapter 5, we see Deborah, the prophetess, right? She was the ruler at the time. She was judge and prophetess. So she, she you know, was the boss. And um, the tribe of Ishakar was known for aiding her. Now, they, you got to be seeing the signs of the times to know politically who to run for, who to fight for, whose side to be on. They knew that she was who got appointed for the time and that God's hand was going to be upon her, and so they was with her, right, while everybody else was kind of, uh, you know, it wasn't popular to be a woman judge and much less a woman prophet in, in Israel at that time. So for, for them to be a whole nation, a, a tribe of people, and support her, that took spectacular sight, foresight. Um, and so then we see them again doing the same thing with David, right? Everybody was trying to, you know, was on Saul's side. And we see we see where some of the tribes was like, we're not helping because Saul told us, you know, not to help. And so, but the tribe of Issachar came and helped. You know, they were there. They helped David. So, again, David wasn't even the king yet. And so they were on his side. So why would they pick someone? Who's not even king yet? Again, they have revelation, they have foresight in the signs of the times. And so that's what we need to have. We need to know, we need to not follow the masses or the people's choice. And we need to follow who God is speaking upon, who's God stamped on, who's his seal upon. Um, because if you don't know, if you, if, you know, if we don't recognize these things, we're going to end up in the wrong crowd. 
we're going to end up following the wrong voices. And so we are in a season of many divine realignments. And every believer needs to, um, needs the Issachar anointing in order to not miss out on what God is doing. So what is the Issachar anointing? Let's find out. Hallelujah. Um, I don't know if you can see my screen. I don't know where everybody is. Um, well, it is the day before Thanksgiving. Um, but I know they told me they were going. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start. I'm just going to have to catch it later, catch the replay. Jeremiah 23 and 30. Out of the NIV, um, it, it says, Therefore, declares the Lord, I am against the prophets who steal from one another words supposedly from me. Now, I'm starting out with this because we have a lot of prophets stealing each other's words, and that's against that's against the word of God. Um, we, we shouldn't do that. Why? Because prophets, he said, I would do no, nothing except I reveal it to them. So to steal from one another, now, not saying we can't speak the same word, but it should not be word for word, you know, like we took it. <laughs> but, and there's a reason. So we're going to, if you go with me to Gen uh, Jeremiah chapter 23 real quick, you'll see what I'm, you'll see what, what I'm talking about. There, now there's several verses in Jeremiah chapter 23 that I'm going to run through, but I don't think I'm going to run through it just yet. But in, but in verse 30, he says, I am against, now this is in the NIV, um, in the KJV, verse 30 says it like this. Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words, every one from his neighbor. Prophets should never have to steal a word because especially seeing prophets, prophets who are, um, you know, uh, not just Nabi, but they are chosen. They are seers. Because they will they will see some prophetic things, some revelatory things, and so I'm gonna tell you why God is against us taking words from one another. Not that we can't see the same thing, but remember the four gospels, the pro the apostles saw the same story, but they told it in their own version. So when it's word for word, line upon line, precept upon precept, then you stole it. But when we, you know, when we get the same word, it's going to come from the way God gave it to us. So that just want to clarify that from that end. But in Jeremiah um, chapter 23, if you read verse 1, he says, Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Verse 2 says, Therefore, thus saith the Lord, uh -oh. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people, ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doing, saith the Lord. Um, I'm saying this because we're living in a time where um, – even the pastors, the priests, the prophets. The, remember, for the past month, we've been talking about false prophets, false, false apostles, false teachers. We've been talking about the, false doctrine, false, falsified stuff, fictitious things in the Bible um, that he talks about. And one of those things are the, you know, the pastors, the apostles, the teachers of the church. God says, I'm going to, I'm going to recompense them with the same evil that they're doing. He said, I'm against them, and I'm going to visit them. So there's a lot of teachers that are going to think it's the devil, and it's not. <laughs> They're going to sure wish it had because at least the devil, ha you know, has to, he has a limit on how much he can do. But with God, he, you know, it's the hand of God unless there be a prophet like um, like Amos, a prophet like, um, let's see, who else? Who else petitioned? E Ezekiel, you know, they would petition Daniel. They would petition to ask God, surely you won't do this, you know, surely. Surely you won't wipe out them. Surely you won't, you know, you're a just God. Surely they would remind God. I know Amos would remind God, look, you, look, there are small people. You don't want to do that. You know, you're a big guy. Now, if you, ha you know, <laughs> <laughs> they would, they would remind God. Yeah. And God will repent. Not in the sense the way we repent, but it would say he repented not. So he didn't put, pour out his, his judgment, but then he would turn around and have a new judgment. And Amos would be like, well, wait a minute. You just talked to you. 
<laughs> so we have to really intercede for the pastors, y'all, and, and even the false apostles and the false prophets, because there there's still people under there who were chosen by God, like Saul was was king, was appointed by the same prophet as David. So there's always a chance that they can see and, and start hearing from God and, and, and no longer walk in error, but somebody got to intercede for them. <laughs> okay. um, so let's go down a couple more verses because there's a place I want to get to real quick. Um, verse 9 says, my heart within me is broken because of the prophets. All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man and like a man whom wine have overcome because of the Lord and because of the words of his holiness. For the land is full of adulterers. For because of swearing, the land mourneth because of all the foul language. He said the land is, is mourning. Jesus. Just the words that, that people are speaking are causing their, their their neighborhoods, their communities to fail. And they don't even wow. know it. Jesus. But, I mean, when you think about it, when he says, you know, our words fall to the earth. Well, yeah, they take root somewhere. And they can even be fruitful for the ground or they can destroy it. But he says, the land is full of adulterers and, and they swear and so the land mourneth. The pleasant places of the wilderness are even dried up. Whoops, Jesus. Even the safe place in the wilderness is no good. And he says, um, I have found their wickedness, saith the Lord. Wherefore, their ways shall be unto them as slippery ways in the darkness. They shall be driven on. You ever wake up in the middle of the night trying to go to the bathroom and you you try not to cut on too many lights to wake up the whole house and you trying to see your way? That's how they, they are in the spirit. In the spirit, these people are slippery, slipping, sliding in the dark. Because there's no vision. They, they're, they've been under false teachings and false prophets. And so this is all lining up to the, the, the Ishakar anointing, the, the anointing to know the signs of the times. This is the signs of the times. Um, I have also, he said, I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem a, a horrible thing. They commit adultery too. <laughs> Jesus. He said, they're doing what the people are doing. And they commit adultery. And they are walking in lies. That means that they're speaking they're speaking to the earth too, um, destruction. And they strengthen also the hands of evildoers. They speak prophetic words into wicked wickedness, that none does return from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom. Y'all know what he did with Sodom, he tore it up. <laughs> and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah was was on fire. Just like in Noah's day, everything was, was by water. This was tore up by fire. Uh, so go down, to, go down to verse 17. They say still unto them that despise me, the Lord hath said, ye shall have peace. And they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. I'm going to come back to Jeremiah 23, but I want to stop there because that word imagination, you're going to see that a lot, specifically from people like Mark Zuckerberg and Bill Gates, because they have Microsoft and Facebook have paired up and they are working on this new meta, um, or the metaverse. And, and, and Revelation actually describes every, it doesn't have the word metaverse. It doesn't say Facebook, obviously, but everything that they are doing is already been prophesied about. And it actually has an image. It actually has a, a representation of what they're doing. And so if you ever go on YouTube in your own spare time and just listen to about, I don't know, however many you can stand. I, I can only listen to one. <laughs> but if you go and you listen to about two or three of his ads on YouTube, he's talking a lot about imagine. Imagine, imagine a world where, imagine this and imagine being, imagine a social media where, imagine, and imagine, 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 imagine. And so the Bible is, one of the signs of the times is you're going to see a lot of these people pushing um, imaginations. Now, what does the Bible tell us to do with imagination? Second um, uh, Chronicles, uh, sorry, Second Chronicles, Second Corinthians 10, verse 5, casting down imagination. They want us to illuminate imagination. Woo! 
So we're going to have to be careful that because this mark is not what we think it is. It's actually an acceptance of something. Oh, geez. Because oh, all of this is in Revelation 13, the, the technology, the mark, all of this stuff is in the same chapter. And it's not by coincidence that it's in the same chapter. Um, so let's keep going uh, on my next screen here. Um, hallelujah. Okay. I don't know if y'all can see, but. Now, what, what is the, what are we talking about? What is it? What is, what is the thing that we're talking about? We are in a season of many divine realignments. I told you that already. So what is the Issachar anointing? There was a unique group of people that always knew what to do. The Bible says they, the, the whole tribe listened to them because they knew what to do. Um, a group of folks that had such perception and wisdom that the entire nation would follow them and waited for their examples. They tended to support the least likely candidate by the leading of God, which was Deborah, which was um, David. You know, this is what they were known to do. They were called the sons of Issachar, and they were one of the 12 tribes of Israel. If you go to 1 Chronicles 7, before we go to 1 Chronicles 12, we're going to go to 1 Chronicles 7. First Chronicles seven. And I'm there. Verse one. Verse one through five says this. I'm in the KJV. First Chronicles chapter seven. Now the sons of Issachar were Tola, Pua, Jashab, and Shemron. There were four. You go that that number four. This number, I'm telling you, this is not by chance. Four is this prophetic number for this season. There were four sons that originated the tribe of Ishkar. And then verse 2 tells you the, the names of the sons. And the sons of Tola, Uzi, and uh, Raphai, and Jeriel, and Jemai, and Gibson, and Shemel, heads of their father's house. These are the sons of Tola, the firstborn. Heads of their father's house. To wit of Tola, they were valiant men of might in their generations, whose number was in the days of David, two and twenty thousand and six hundred. Good God Almighty. Can you imagine this tribe being dispersed in the land today? Can you imagine how this number has multiplied since then? How many people are walking around in the in the ends of the earth, the four corners of the earth with this anointing? He said everybody under this household had it, were valiant. They were all valiant, even, even in their generations. That means down in genealogy. Verse 3, the sons of Azai, this is the second born. Uh, um, this is the um, Tola, the son, of, the son of Tola, grandson to, Ish, to uh, Ishakar. And the sons of Israel, Michael and Ob Obadiah and Joel and Ishaiah, five. So he had five sons, all of them chiefs. See, here we go. You see it. God is showing you in each generation, whoever he, you know, uh, ordained as the scribe to write chapter seven. They may mention that each generation, were, they, all, they all obtained the same anointing. They were all valiant. They were all chiefs. Verse four. And with them by their generations after the house of their fathers were bands of soldiers for war. Y'all need to write that down. Soldiers for war. Whenever you hear or read of the tribe of Issachar, you're going to see soldiers of war attached to their name. That's just who God ordained them to be. By default, they were soldiers of war. Six and 30,000 men, for they had many wives and sons. And their brethren among all the families of Issachar were valiant men, see, even their brothers, even their brethren, were valiant men of might, reckoned in all by their genealogies, even down, down to generations. See, we always try to figure out what's in our bloodline that's evil and demonic, but you need to go down, go down in the bloodline and find out if there's any anointings that got passed down to you. In all their genealogies, four score and 7,000. 
And so it's going to go on into the sons of Benjamin. But now go over to chapter 12 of First Chronicles. Chapter 12. First, First Chronicles 12. Hallelujah. All right, First Chronicles 12, we're going to kind of scatter. We're going to be all up in this book for a little bit because there's a lot of knowledge in First Chronicles 12. Um, verse 1, now, there are, now these are they that came to David to Ziglag. Remember we were talking about Ziglag? While he yet kept himself close because of Saul, the son of Kish. And they were among the mighty men, helpers of the war. I wrote down here, um, Ezar, E-Z-E-R. That word in the Hebrew, you'll find it even as early as Genesis chapter 2 when it refers to Eve. So it means helper or helpers, but a, but a particular type of helper. Remember, Eve wasn't just some, some hired help. Eve was his helpmate. Woo. So there's a difference. There's a higher standard of what kind of help this person is. This is a divine help. This isn't hired help. Ooh, Jesus. So that word Ezar um, in verse one, helpers of the war, Ezar. This is this is divine help, not not hired help. Um, and he's talking about the tribe of Benjamin. So this is you can write this down. Number one, the, one of the first anointings that I've seen God releasing. And this is a clarion call for all who will receive it, um, was the tribe of Benjamin, the Benjamites, the anointing of the Benjamites. Verse 2 says they were armed with bows and could use both the right hand and the left in hurling stones and shooting arrows out of a bow, even of Saul's brethren of Benjamin. Y'all remember Saul came out of the tribe of Benjamin. Benjamites. They were bowmen, skilled and being ambidextrous, shooting arrows and slinging stones. So even in the, in the supernatural realm, you may have visions, open visions, transits, dreams, where you see you can, you can yield a weapon in both your hands. Woo, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may see yourself um, actually with a, with a bow, with a dart, with an arrow, and your target it's far away from you, but you, you, you aim perfectly. Hallelujah. I have actually seen this. This is why I'm speaking on the anointing of Benjamin, because I've seen this. I, there was, I, I've had plenty of um, dreams where the enemy uh, was bent over, and, and the people I was with, I was like, I'm ready to go. And they was like, we cannot leave until we finish this war. I said, hand me my bow. <laughs> I don't know if the man was my armor bearer or what, but I said, hand me my bow. And he handed it to me, and he handed me a um, a dart. It wasn't an arrow, but it was like a dart. And I pulled that thing back, and I shot it right in the enemy's butt, and he killed over. And I was like, now can we go? <laughs> I'm telling you, God is releasing this thing where you won't have to, you won't even have to lift a finger. You'll have the weapon from afar. This is one of those weapons where you can shoot it from afar. Where you can, you know, even your prayer life, your your prayer language, your intercessory skills can reach afar, like a dart. Hallelujah. So some had a u a unique skill of noting, and this is one of this was the Benjamites. The, so one of the I, I'm giving you all four tonight. The first one God showed me was the anointing of Benjamin, and the anointing of Benjamin is a a skilled bowman that is uh, ambidextrous at shooting arrows and slinging stones. Verse 3, the chief was Ahizar, then Joash, the sons of Shammai, the Gibeonites, Jezeel. And it's going to go into his whole bloodline. Skip down to verse 8 of chapter 12. Verse 8. So now we, we, we got number one, the Benjamites. Number two, the, the anointing of the Gadites. That's number two. And these are important. These are important. I'm gonna tell y'all why in a minute. These are very important. And of the Gadites, they're separated themselves. There go that word separate. When you are 
getting ready to be um, poured upon, when God is getting ready to release you, sometimes he puts you in seclusion. He puts you in a season of isolation. Um, sometimes there's even, um, you know, he'll, he'll stir division or animosity even uh, amongst individuals so that he can get you alone. And this is because he's ready to impart some things to you. The separation is not necessarily always a bad thing. The, the Gadites have been separated. They, they're, they're separated themselves. They didn't even need God to intervene like some of us do. They separated themselves. And they separated themselves to help David because they realized who David was. And the hand of God was upon David. Um, and of the Gadites, they separated themselves unto David into the hold, to the wilderness of men and might. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. And, and, and to the wilderness, men of might and men of war, fit for the battle that could handle shield and buckler, whose faces were like the faces of a lion, of lion, sorry, and were as swift as the rolls upon the mountains. My God. My God. Hallelujah. And, and of the Gadites, they have separated themselves unto David into the wilderness. The stronghold, this word, this word hold means stronghold or a fort. They were held up with David in a fort whoo, in the wilderness. And, and it said their faces, this is, this is the anointing of the Gadites. Not only will you be a man or a woman of war, but you will be able to yield the shield, the spear, or the, uh, the word the, the KJV says buckler. But buckler translates to spear. You'll be able to throw that spear. Again, you don't have to be up close and personal. This is an anointing where you won't have to necessarily fight one-on-one -on -one with the enemy, but you'll have a weapon that can kill it from afar. Woo. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whose faces were like the faces of lions. Let me tell you, if, if the face alone don't, don't cause somebody not to mess with you, <laughs> then you pull out your weapons. But in most cases, their face was like, I'm, I'm not here to play. <laughs> you know, you ever had that friend in school and you just be like, that person, when they come to help you fight, they, you knew that they, they, look, don't waste my time. There better have been a fight because they came for war. They came to fight. Um, and then it said they were swift as gazelles in the mountain. Do you know how quick footed the Bible even talks about, um, I think in Ezekiel about the, he said, you make my feet, it's Ezekiel or David in Psalms, he said it too. But he said, you make my feet, you cause my feet to be like hind's feet. Hind's feet is the, is the, um, the, the front feet. I want to say the front feet. It could be the back feet. I'm not, I'm, don't quote me. I'm not sure if it's the front or the back feet. I, I want to say the, the back feet. But the hind's feet is the back feet of a deer, of, you know, of a gazelle. Um, and what it is, they can run at a pace. That is so fast, they don't even have to look down at where they're running to because they're so sure-footed. Their feet is, is meant to stay in, in place. And so to be, um, some of you may be seeing these symbols where you're dreaming of deers, gazelles. This is what this means, the anointing of the Gadites. They're so sure-footed. You're going to know which way to go, and you're going to move quickly. Ooh, Jesus, hallelujah, Father, anoint our feet. Hallelujah. I'm telling y'all, teaching this, I'm getting the, I feel the anointing just sitting here. Hallelujah. Even tonight when I went in prayer before, before getting on the line, I felt the anointing just all over me, just consume me as I was praying. Hallelujah. So the skills from the Gadites, you, you, you will be able to make weapons and utilize them. Um, hallelujah, Jesus. Because it says that they were, well, I haven't gotten that far yet, but we're going to, we're going to read some more on the Gadites. Um, go down to verse, let's see, where are we at? Verse 14. These were the sons, these were of the sons of Gad, captains of the hosts. One of the least was over a hundred and the greatest over a thousand. Oh, Jesus. My God, these Gadites ain't come to play. <laughs> They were captains of the host, okay? They didn't just come be a soldier. They, they, they were on the front line. As you call the sergeants, the captains, they were in charge. That means they gave out the instructions on where to go, how to get there, how to hide. They gave out the strategy. They were the strategists. I think in the military they called them, um, what do they call those? The, um, 
what do they call them? I can't think of it. But they give they give intel. They 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 tell you, you know, how to go. They're they're really good at what they do. Um verse thirty six. It says, and of Asher, such as went forth to battle, expert in war, 40,000. And on the other side of Jordan, of the Reubenites and the Gadites, and of the half-tribe Manasseh, with all manner of instruments of war for the battle, and 120,000. So you have this people of Gadites, each with a particular capability within the tribe. So you have a portion, it says um, 120,000. Of this portion, they are able to make instruments, utilize all manner of instruments. They, they, they got it. You need it. They know how to make it. They know how to wield it. They know how to use it. And then it says over here in verse 14 that you had one over 100 that was the least and greatest over 1,000. You know, these these were the number of those who had the skill of being swift. They were fast runners. They were swift, and, and you forget, they in the mountains. And you're talking about running in such a speed where you can run and not fall off a cliff. So this was a skill indeed. This is like that um, they have Olympic medalists who go up into, you know, Japan, China, and they have to go up in them slopes, and, they, you know, you, you win by being the fastest up in those mountains. So this is definitely a skill. Um, then you have some of the Gadites who could yield a, a bow, a buckler. Um, they were men of war. And then you had another percentage of them who were chiefs in war. So this, again, is another anointing. Hallelujah. Now we have the um, verse 17. Anyone not willing to ease on, let God rebuke it. Woo, Jesus. This has been, this is my prayer in this season. Verse 17, um, and verse, and chapter 12, let's look at it. And David went out to meet them and answered and said unto them, If ye be come peaceably unto me to help me, my heart shall be knit unto you. But if ye be come to betray me to my enemies, Seeing there is no wrong in my hands, the God of our fathers look thereon and rebuke it. Woo, Jesus, hallelujah. So David is establishing when you, see, you got to know when you're about to be in a war, when you're about to be in a battle. And this is where I'm, the battle I'm referring to is the battle of, of Armageddon. I'm talking about the end time harvest. We don't know if we're going to be, be here to see it, if we're going to be a part of it, or if we got to train our generation, you know, our children for their generation to be a part of it. However, whatever God is doing, whether it be us directly or indirectly, our generations are still going to be a part of this thing. And we have to set the foundation now whether it be in us or be in the next generation. And so one thing that David recognized was he, look, you got to ask questions. You for me or you not? <laughs> because if you with me, my heart will be knit to you. I'll be forever indebted to you, and my God will reward you. But if you're not, he said, now, I'm going to make sure I pray that God see it and he rebuke it. Ooh, Jesus. So those of you who are in a war now and you're dealing with enemies and and even natural enemies who are being used by spiritual devils, listen, tell them, if you're not on my side, you're not, you're not trying to help me get where I'm going, you're not about to help me uh, cultivate my gifts, and you're not about to help me expedite what God is trying to raise up in me, then I got to ask God to rebuke your, whatever, it is your, whatever it is you came to do. Hallelujah. I like that. He, I love that. He didn't say I rebuke it. He said, but my Lord will look thereon and he will rebuke it. Verse 18, this is another good, this is a, another good nugget. Then the spirit came upon Amasai, who was chief of the captains. And he said, thine are we, David, and on thy side, thy son of Jesse, peace, peace be unto thee, and peace be to thy helpers, for thy God helpeth thee. Then David received them and made them captains of the band. First of all, this man walked up and he just, this this is a revel, revelator. 
um, you're going to see this anointing as well. You're going to see people. They're just going to come up to you. They're going to come up to your side. They're going to acknowledge who you are. They're going to acknowledge the God on your life. They're going to tell you this is what you're working on. God told me to help be a part of it. Won't you? I've been seeing that in this season. There are things that I'm producing that I can say I actually have constant supporters. They're not far and few in between, but there's some who really help every week. Every week they're like, I'm sewing into this because I know what God has told me to do. I know what you're birthing. I know what you're doing. They're, they're going to be people like Amasai. They're going to walk up to you and they're going to say, look, I don't know you and you don't know me, but God told me that you are the son of this. You are the daughter of this. You are the daughter of the Most High. And he said, and we will be on your side. And I declare peace. Anybody that texts you, call you, mail you a letter that causes catastrophe, that causes chaos, they're just problematic, cut them off. Because let me tell you, you're going into a war where you're going to need people that's on your side 110%. You don't need no ifs, ands, hanging about it, weighing in the balance. Well, let me see. Let me think about it. You need people that know that they know. Look, we're on your side. The, the Gadites said, look, we came and separated ourselves unto you. Everyone that was on David's side all had the same mentality. But if you cannot miss something in verse 18. Very, very, very important. It said, then the Spirit came upon Amasai. You got to make sure the people that's on your side are filled with the Spirit of God. Otherwise, they will not speak peace unto you. Otherwise, they will not war with you. In fact, they're going to run and flee the minute they see the warfare on your life. Woo, Jesus. They're going to think you're the problem. Something got to be wrong with you. You're always in warfare. You're always talking about the devil bothering you. You're always talking about you seeing this. And you're always talking about this happening to you. They're going to think you are the problem. They are not going to war with you. Jesus. But those with the Spirit of God will know that they know. And they were declaring the clear thing. See here twice, he says, peace. That means and if you go back to Genesis, when um, when Joseph uh, interpreted Pharaoh's dream, he said, uh, Pharaoh, king, the dream has been doubled because it is it is of urgency. It is It has come to pass. It is going to be established, and it will soon be established. So twice this man, under the unction of the Holy Spirit, says, peace. Peace be unto thee. And peace be to whoever helps you. That, that word Ezar, that same word is used in the Hebrew. It's not, it's not, you know, there's different definitions in the Bible. But this Hebrew word is the same throughout. Ezar, divine helper. Peace be unto those who help you. There could be some backlash for people praying over you, covering you, and they don't know your warfare. They don't know what, what which you, you battle. They don't know what what religion you're trying to come out of. They don't they don't know what your 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 ancestral history is like and they're you know telling you they're gonna pray for you and then when that witch go visit them they're not strong enough. But you're gonna have some people who God is they're gonna be uh prophesied over that they're gonna have peace. Because you got some people they're not assigned to you. If they're talking about well I had this backlash when I tried to go into prayer for you. They are not assigned. They, they, no. Because the people who are assigned as a divine helper, Ezar, were going to have peace, just like you're going to have peace during your battle. Hallelujah. So anybody that calls you talking about, girl, I, you know, bro, I had, I had the strangest this and this and this after I, after I was praying with you. First of all, that's a red flag. Bro, you need not pray for me no more because you are not assigned to. <laughs> and, and, and you hate to be that brash, but. We're coming into a time where we're talking about anointings being released. There's no time for this. Ain't no time for mess. You, you seen in verse 17 where David said, look, I need to know if you're on my side or not. Because if you're on my side, my heart will go with you. But if you're not, my God will rebuke you. So which one? I need to, if there is no in the middle. There is no you're on my side today and tomorrow you're not. And, and one day you you blessed by God for helping me. And the next day you rebuke by God for not. No, that, that is confusion. Either you are or you're not. So I thought that was verse 17 and 18 were two very, very big nuggets for its strategy in going to a spiritual battle. Um, and so the, the rest of this is just going into some more of um, the different tribes that came to help. I want to, there's something that I want to point out to you in verse 23 to verse 30. No, even to verse 31. They all have thousands upon thousands. You're going to see that when you read it for yourself. 
um, verse 24 says the children of Judah were 6,800 ready armed to war. Judah is another anointing that is going to be released. Um, I'm not going into Judah tonight because um, that's for another day. Judah need its own, needs its own night of teaching, okay? So I'm not going into but Judah is one of them. Judah, uh, in fact, Judah is one of the two tribes that actually remained out of the 12 naturally. But we're talking about spiritual anointing. So um, you, any of these anointings can be placed on us. But, but Judah had uh, 6,800 ready armed to war. Um, and then below it, verse 25, the children of Simon, they had 7,100. The tribe of Levi had 4,600. So you see all these thousands, thousands, thousands. But when you get to verse 32, look what it says. And, the, and of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do. The heads of them were 200. <laughs> and all their brethren were at their commandment. All these tribes done marched up in here, thousands upon thousands upon thousands. And here the tribe of Ishakar come in with 200. And they're the wisest. And look, Lord Jesus. Um, and all their brethren were at their commandment. Do y'all know the brethren is the other 11 tribes? So all these thousands upon thousands together combined are at the command of the tribe of 200. Oh, Jesus. That tells you a lot about how powerful the Ishakar anointing is. Because um, you need tribes for war. But when it comes to strategy, all you need is one good strategist. Whew, Jesus. To release the plan. What do we do? Okay, what does what 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 do we need to do? Tell us how to fight. Tell us where we need to go. Tell us what weapons we need to use. You can have many in the in in, in war in battle, but you need at least one good strategist. Oh Jesus! They had two hundred two. Here we go. That number again is established, and it is soon to come to pass. Hallelujah! It said they had understanding of the times. When you look at that word times in the Hebrew, Hebrew because the Old Testament is written in Hebrew. So when you look up words, it can't be in the Greek. I mean, you can just to get an extra anointing. I mean, you know, an extra understanding. But for clarity of the verse itself, you need to you need to research it in the Hebrew. That word times in the Hebrew um, translates seasons. Oh, geez. So he's not talking about a chronological hour or time. He's talking about a season. The signs of the seasons. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. To God be glory. The signs of the season. Hallelujah. The Ishakar anointing. These are some of the things. And I suggest y'all go back and watch this on YouTube because my PowerPoint, this PowerPoint is off the chart. <laughs> um, we see Ishakar was the observant one, right? Being watchful and attentive to his surroundings. He was aware and understood the events around him. He understood the times and the seasons. Perhaps that is why God chose him to follow Judah as the second tribe when Israel moved behind the cloud. My God, so you got worship. Judah, remember, Judah means worship. You got Judah going first. Hallelujah. And after Judah is Issachar, because Issachar can tell you what's got to happen. He can see it from afar. Hallelujah. That anointing can tell you, um, you know, lately I've been talking about this meta. I said, I'm waiting on God to tell me, Lord, when you want me to come off these social media platforms and I'll come off. I'm, you know, I'm, I've already given the heads up that I'm coming off. So anyone that's been following me has the opportunity to stay connected. But the minute God says, pull the plug, I'm pulling the plug. But that's because that anointing has been on me for a while now to see things before, you know, further out, foresight. So right now, Metaverse is not in position to do the damage that it intends to. They need time. There's some things in place, but they need time to get the power to execute it from Microsoft's standpoint. Um, for instance, the portals that Metaverse is going to open up unto people. Oh, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. I'm telling y'all, the, the first night I began to pray about Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg, and Meta, that, that's the same night the Lord showed me a bear. And this bear was seeking. Um, there was a child beside me, a little boy. There was a child beside me. And so wherever I hid, it was almost like I was hiding, but I wasn't hiding from the bear. I was more so hiding the little boy. And so we were in the floorboards. And somehow through the floorboards, I could see into the, you know, the house, into the kitchen. And I could see where this bear was searching throughout the house. So this tells me this bear, so now you got to go, and I don't want to get ahead of myself. You got to go in the Word of God and find out what beast represents or the symbol is a bear. You got to start finding, you got to, this is the signs of the times. You got to start recognizing Daniel um, and Revelation John. Who's talking about a bear? What is this bear? What is this? And how does it pertain to today, the meta, technology? Um, and so the little boy was beside me. I did not understand why this little boy was beside me until I woke up. When I woke up and I was at work, the news came on and I overheard that meta was under investigation. I think I put, I sent this long text out, and, you know, and, and this is, that's another thing the Lord told me that a lot of people are going to miss the signs of the times because they have a two minute mentality. They will not read the, and it's, they will not read warnings in its entirety. They will not listen to videos in their fullness. They will not get the, the, um, what God is saying because they, they expect God to release an end time prophecy in under three minutes. So he said a lot of people are going to miss this. If you're one of them people that can't read the whole thing, you can't watch the whole thing, you never go back to it, you start stuff and never finish, you might miss what God is trying to show you. But if you are one who, let me read this from the beginning to the end, let me go back, let me dissect, let me break this up. Wait a minute, so what is this saying? What, okay, if that's you, you are definitely a, a candidate for this anointing because you have a, there, there's a naturalness about you to want to know things, right? David said, I want to know, are you on my side? I want to know if you're not. <laughs> I need to know because my life could be in jeopardy if I let you in on my team and you're not on my team. So you got to have this I need to know mentality. I have that I need to know mentality because especially if I'm a part of something. So I'm a part of the social media big time for my business, for ministry mostly. And so I want to know, Lord, is this something I can be a part of? And so, again, um, the Instacar anointing. We need the Instacar anointing to know what God is doing in the earth and how, uh, you know, we, we fit in, right? He says, again, I will do nothing except I reveal it first to my prophets. Okay, so that means prophets in this day got to have time to read warnings and in its entirety. They need, they need time to, uh, because if God, I'm telling you, if you like me, you dream movie dreams, that tell you right there that you have to have a patience about you to be able to sit down and write out a movie dream, and maybe you had two, three movie dreams in the night. You got to write now. You got to you writing out a whole script, and now that's not the end of it. You got to dissect what you saw. Okay, I dreamt of a bear. Where, what, what scripture? What prophecy? What end time verse is talking about bear? Okay, I dreamed about deer. What is talking? About, what What does the deer represent? What scripture? You got to write all this out. Oh Jesus, Hallelujah! When this outpouring comes, and it is coming. We are not going to look back. We're going to look ahead because what we establish here will take us right into the millennium. So we need the Ishakar anointing so that we understand where we are in and in and, and relation to where we are going. Okay, Meta, where are we going with this? I need to see the vision. You know, when you walk into a church, usually they, the church will have a church mission statement as soon as you walk in. So then you can realize Okay, do I want do I fit in here? Can I join here? Do 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 I agree with their mission? Some churches are missionaries. So people who are missionaries are drawn to missionary churches. Some people are prophetic. You do not do well in churches that are not prophetic. You you are drawn to prophetic ministries. Some people are apostolic. You are drawn to apostolic um churches. So you, when you walk in, you see that the church mission statement matches and aligns with what you are doing. So you figure this is a good place for me to grow and go. Hallelujah. Uh, so we need to understand where we are in relation to where we are going. Social media is changing, y'all. It's never going to be the same. It's not going to be like it was two, three years ago. 
Um, in fact, a lot of us, we're going to, we're getting, <laughs> you're going to find that everything that the world does is going to push us further and further into not so much an isolation, but a separation where we're no longer are, are a part of this. Uh, we're no longer a part of that. And we're no longer connected. Why? Because this is too many influences. God is getting ready to speak. God is getting, and I feel the anointing right now. I'm, t- I'm just flowing. God is getting ready to release. And he's getting ready to speak, and he's getting ready to rebuke the devourer for for his namesake. He's getting ready to do some things that's going to require you to hear. That's why Revelation, the first three chapters, John sees and John tells us, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. Because in chapter 4, he says, now come up here. Now, listen, that's when the church is supposed to be caught up. Because you no longer hear, he no longer makes reverence to any more of the church on, on earth. He's now taking John up into the things that has to come, he says, hereafter. So the first three chapters are a warning for us. He that has an ear, you can't hear God if you're connected to social media all the time. You can't hear God if you're connected to something called an, another universe, uh, something that's causing you to go into imagination. So thank you, Holy Spirit. He just brought me back to my point. Mark Zuckerberg, what he's doing is, some of y'all have seen it. There is an option for a portal. No, there's an option for portal. And on this side, there's an option for Oculus. Hallelujah, Jesus. And these two combined, what they're going to do, if you listen to his ads, his advertisements on YouTube, he says, imagine a world. Imagine, 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 imagine. He wants to take us out of the natural realm and t- and put us put our minds into a place that is demonic. Ooh, Jesus, take you to a place where, um, and I'm not going to get ahead of myself, but the Bible, the Revelation 13, actually tells us that there's going to be um, that he says he he will bring out who is he? There's no name by it, but he has. Um, it's just like if I if I describe your son to you or I describe your husband to you, I don't never have to say his name, but if I describe his characteristics and his features to you, you'll be like, that sounds like my son. <laughs> that sounds like my husband. That sounds like my brother. That sounds like my father. Um, so when you see he, he's referring to a beast that has the capability and certain characteristics to do certain things. This he um, not saying Mark Zuckerberg is the, is, is the Antichrist, but he, he definitely represents one of the beasts that has the capabilities and is already producing some things that has already been prophesied. And so this, this, this imagine and all this imagine this and, and, and imagine that, that, that. No, cast down every imagination and every high thing because every sin starts with a thought. So we can cast down these imaginations, right? Um, this remnant of end time believers will have their eyes open to see the bigger picture of what God is doing in the earth. Remember the the tribe of Issachar, they were known to support in war and battle those who were not the people's favorite, right? They were not the people's choice. Deborah was not the people's choice. David was not the people's choice. In fact, when Samuel went to go anoint, the, he, he he went through all the brothers before he went to David. He said, well, God, this looks, he, the older brother, he looks strong, he, he, right? <laughs> but here, Issachar, before David is king, is on his side. They had the, the, the capacity to see things others could not. The last one, because I'm, I told you I was giving you four, um, the Benjamites, who's the other one I say? The Gadites. The Ishakar anointing and the Zebulun anointing. Zebulun, go go down to verse thirty three. And of the children of Ishakar, no, that's verse thirty two. Verse thirty three of Zebulun, such as went forth to battle, expert in war, with all instruments of war, fifty thousand, which could keep rank. They were not of double heart. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Y- y'all know who that sound like? Zebulun sound like the Gadites. They got a lot of the same characteristics because in verse 36, it also tells you the Gadites also were experts of war, also um, skilled in all manner of instruments. Y'all got, you got a highlight. I got my highlighter. You got to highlight that. 
He says, with all manner of instruments of war, not some instrument. This is why. See, I told y'all I didn't have the fullness of it. But weeks ago, even months ago, I told y'all I was seeing myself in dreams with different weapons. My hand, there would be nothing in my hands. And then all of a sudden, suddenly, there would be a weapon in my hand that would just appear from out of nowhere. When you have this, when you, when God appoints that, that anointing on you, you'll begin to see yourself skilled in all manner of instruments. Jesus. There is no, well, in the spirit, I see myself with a sword. Oh, in the spirit, I just, I, you know, I always have a hammer. No, you want to see yourself with all manner of, this is how you're going to know that the impartation has been upon you. Hallelujah. Zebulun, expert in war with all instruments, 50,000, which could keep rank. They were not of double heart. You, you better highlight that. He said they could keep rank, meaning they could hold to the best of them. <laughs> Jesus. You ever hear people say they could run with the best of them? Zebulun could run with the best of them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that Zebulun could keep rank, and they did not have a double heart. That, that's what goes back. We go back to it again. You see how each anointing, each tribe describes not having a double heart. You got to know that you know. Gad, Benjamites came in and said, look, we're we going to separate ourselves for you. we here. We, we, we're not going nowhere. David asked, David asked um, uh, Amasai, who was the captain of the host, you with me? <laughs> or, or you with them? Because if you betray me, God going to rebuke you. God going to see it. He going to look there on. And when he asked him, the Spirit of the Lord rests on Amasai to give him a spiritual answer, a, a prophetic answer. Oh, Jesus. Amasai could not have answered David properly without the anointing. Hallelujah. Whenever you see that, that, you know what, that ought to be a um, a memory verse. Whenever you see scripture where the spirit rests on someone before they spoke, that means what they're getting ready to speak is the oracles of God. They're getting ready to speak prophetically. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I'm not going to keep y'all long because I know it's the night before Thanksgiving. It's 9 o'clock. Um, I know I said till 9.30, but the Zebulun anointing, really quickly, the Zebulun anointing helps to establish the revelation of Jesus Christ in the remnant who will be part of God's movement in this new season. Um, that's why I've been listening to Israel Houghton all day. It's a new season. It's a new season. It's a new day. A fresh anointing is blowing my way. By this anointing, a remnant of God's people is going to taste the good word of God and the powers of the age to come. Hebrews 6 and 5. These pioneers will cross over into the age to come and bring the powers of that age back into our day. Like the Israelites who, who were sent to spy out the promised land, these forerunners will venture over into the land of promise and bring back the fruit of that land and say, here it is. Woo! This is what we are after and it's over there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, Zebulun, because of the Zebulun anointing, these forerunners are going to cause men to overshadow our realm. Oh, Jesus. They're going to experience things that we may never have dreamed about. They're going to taste amazing things. The glory of this latter house will be greater than the former house. Come on, somebody. Because of the revelation out from Zebulun will, call, will come those who will do warfare as a scribe. In other words, those who write for the Lord will release the needed revelation for today. Timely and seasonal revelation for his remnant as God's presence begins to move forward. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. So what are the anointings that, are, that, that God is releasing? Number one, he showed me skill. Write that down. Skill. What's coming out of these four um uh, anointing or these tribes, these spiritual tribes, because this is the birthing season of these anointings. You guys are seeing yourself pregnant in the spirit. It's not necessarily a spiritual gift or a spiritual baby. It's an anointing. Woo. You get ready to birth skill. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wisdom is the principal thing, Proverbs 4 and 7. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting of wisdom, get understanding of how to apply it also. What good is it to have wisdom and you don't even know where to put it? You don't know, you don't know where, how to apply it. So wisdom and the application. Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Strategy. That's another thing we're birthing. Hallelujah. Strategy. You are becoming strategists. You're becoming strategic in your warfare. You're becoming intentional in how you speak. You're becoming intentional in how you praise. You're becoming intentional in your tithing and giving, not sporadic here and there, once a month, twice a month, but you are doing it common every week. Jesus. You are strategy, clarity, intentional about the things of God. God, I'm I'm, I'm doing this. I'm I'm a, I'm gonna do this. As my sister said, my money is blessed. Yes, honey. Jesus. Woo, God. Hallelujah. Number three, supplies. God is getting ready to um you what as one of the um the anointings, as you know, the, the different anointings that's coming out. One of the ways you can tell that you have been anointed with these anointings is that you will have supplies. You will have more than enough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. More than enough. Look at verse 40 of chapter 12. It says, matter of fact, start at, read, the, read the last two verses of chapter 12. Let's, let's close with this. And there, and there they were with David. Three days, eating and drinking for their brethren had prepared for them. Jesus, God's great to prepare. God's great to prepare for you. Moreover, they that were nigh them, even unto Issachar and Zebulun. Let me tell you about, out of those four anointings, Issachar and Zebulun is very, very powerful. They're all very, very strategic and very, very necessary. But these two, my God, these two because Issachar the Ishakar anointing, I call it the anointing of Izzy, is going to tell you how and which way to go. How, how? okay, if I got the plan, you need somebody to help you execute the plan. That's Zebulun. So Ishakar says, we need three days worth of provision. Zebulun says, I got it. I figured it out. This is how we can bring, this is how we can carry three days worth of provision. Ooh, check out that about see. They both need each other. So Issachar and Zebulun said they were nigh. Um, moreover, they that were nigh them, even unto Issachar, that means they were farther away. These tribes had to come from a further distance than the others, and yet they needed to they needed to travel with more stuff. Oh Jesus! So not only will you know how to travel longer, you're gonna know how to travel further. Naphtali brought bread on asses and on camels and on mules and on oxen and meat and meal and cakes of figs and bunches of raisins and wine and oil and oxen and sheep abundantly, for there was joy in Israel. First of all, if you're dreaming of any of these things, these are symbols. If you are dreaming of camels carrying something, oxen carrying something, if you're dreaming of plant, making provisions with meat, um, meal, cakes, figs, if you're dreaming of raisins, Wine, oil, all these things are symbolic to provision. Hallelujah. Supplies. If God has shown you provisions, he's shown you supplies. That's the anointing. And the fourth one is scribes. You're dreaming of writing. God has shown you your books. God has shown you the title of what to write. There's something prophetic in your belly that needs to come out to help people understand the times. Woo, Jesus. The scribes, that was also Zebulun. They were also, they were provisions. They were revelatories. They understood things of revelation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. To give you direction, to give you wisdom, to give you clarity, to give you understanding. The four anointings of Gad, Benjamin, Ishakar, and Zebulun. And guess what? People of God. Oh, Jesus. The, the, those who receive these anointings, I hear the Lord say, they will not be limited to just one. Hallelujah. But we'll have all four. You cannot possess just one. There's going to be a need for, for each individual to possess all four anointings. So you're getting ready to get your vessels. You're getting ready to strengthen your, your, your sanctuaries to hold, to be whole, four new anointings. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's necessary. Why? Because all of these tribes, Possessed a skill, an anointing.
that caused them to be successful and to have joy while in battle. How many people you know go into battle smiling? <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. You about to. <laughs> you about to because you're getting ready to have clarity on how to go in. You're getting ready to have strategy as to how to go out. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So with that being said, what symbols will be shown? I already told you some of the symbols, meal, figs, raisins, wine, um, deer, oxen, what else? Bears. Um, there's all kinds of clouds. These are the symbols. If you go back and you read um, Daniel chapter 7 and Revelation 13, there are a ton of symbols that rep represent the beast, different beasts, four beasts. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. So back back in Jeremiah 23, right, we read verse 1 through 2. We read verse 11. We read verse 13. But there is a significant. We read verse 17. But what we didn't read was verse 18. Let me go back there real quick. Jeremiah 23. Verse 18. Here we go. Here we go. This is important. I got it highlighted in red for a reason. Verse 17 said that they they say still unto them that despise me, the Lord hath said, ye shall have peace. And they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination. Okay, first of all, that's a false peace, right? Remember, imagination, we need to highlight that word because this is something. When you see words in the Bible, and then you hear the enemy speaking it. When you, I told y'all on those ads on YouTube, Mark Zuckerberg says, "Imagine a world. Imagine, imagine, imagine. We're, we're, we're opening up your eyes of imagination in a new portal and a new a new universe. And and our logos will be the the. I think he said the tiger and the the buffalo, but they look so demonic. But anyway, that's a false piece. You you go into this thing. Where, and, and see, they've even asked you, because I've seen it on my thing, on my page. It said, would you like to make a call using the new portal? I said, make a call using the what now? I went to take a screenshot of it. It disappeared. You want me to make a call using a portal? <laughs> Jesus. What is that? I didn't look. I asked questions. I don't know about anybody else who just go and do stuff. I need to know what, what is portal? What, what that is? What? You want me to make a call? What's wrong with Messenger? I've been using it. But that's the things you got to watch out for. Those things are going to stick out like a sore thumb. You said, you want me to do what now? They want to take you into an imagination. So if I would have made that call on Portal, God knows what type of backlash I would have had, what type of residue I would have had to clean up. But what they're wanting to do is to take you in a place where you you feel like you right there with the people that you're talking to. And in, in this thing, it's, um, it's Oculus. So you can feel like you're touching walls that's not there. You can, you, you, you know, you're touching things that's not there. You're, and so in the natural, you look foolish. You're swapping and you're doing all this and you, can't nobody else see but what you see. You're the only one can see it. That's a, that's a, that, that is a spirit of losing your mind. You, and you think you're playing the game. You're entertaining a, a, a psycho spirit. You're doing all of this swatting and moving, touching things. Well, it's a movie. They, they got a show out on Netflix like that. I was like, oh, this is demonic. But verse 18, look at it. Oh, well, wait a minute. Go back to 17. He said, they say unto them that despise me. Oh, Jesus. He's talking about the false prophet. These, you know, um, in Revelation 13, one of the beasts that's emerging is the false prophet. And his image, I think it was, it was either the it was um, it was either the lion or the bear, the false prophet. I think it's the lion. He has the image of a lion. But he said, they, they that despise me, they say the Lord has said. They say, thus saith the Lord. They lie. They lie on God. They, they, and so remember, you got those who, if you're just now joining, you got to go back and rewatch. But earlier we said, and um, I forget what verse. I think it was verse 11. 13, where he said, um, do not, well, where, what verse was it? I can't remember what verse it was. I don't even think I gave it out yet. I think we're getting there. Yeah, we're getting there. Verse 22. 
we haven't gotten there yet. Um, so in verse 17, he says, they say the Lord has said, ye shall have peace. God did not declare you to have no peace. So there are many people who God did not say that everything was, that all is well. So y'all have to discern, especially if you know you did something, you know you, you, you in error, because he's talking about it, they have errors. You in error, and, and turn around, you getting prophecies, talking about God said everything's going to work out. God said peace. That is a lying prophet. You know you you know God told you that you have to repent of something, and yet you getting words that, that everything is all is well. Oh, Jesus. 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 And so remember in um, First, Chron- First Chronicles chapter 12, remember the, the Spirit of the Lord told Am- what was his name, Am- 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 Amaziah? I can't remember his name. He told him to prophesy to Daniel, um, to David, peace, and peace unto who, who helped him. Now, that was the spirit. This is not the spirit. This is a false spirit. He said they lie. Verse 18, for who has stood in the counsel of the Lord? And have perceived and heard his word. Who have marked his word and heard it? Who wrote it down? Who heard and wrote it? Because when you write it down, it's acknowledging that I heard it. I heard you, Lord. When you heard God and you don't write it down, you're not acknowledging it. But when you heard it and you write it, you mark it. You highlight it. You put it where you will, where you won't forget and put it in the corner. So, but it's still on the nightstand. Lord, I heard you. I heard this. He said, but who stood in my council? Not the false prophet. That's why they got to come and steal people's words, and they got to steal word for word verbatim. Um, hallelujah, Jesus. You, they they, 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 uh, they got to copy and paste everything you say verbatim because they have not stood in the council of the Lord. That's why he said, I hate I hate these lying prophets. Verse, um, let's see, verse 20. Now I'm skipping. I'm skipping, but y'all gotta go back and read Jeremiah 23 because this ties into the prophecy. This ties into the end time prophecy. Verse 20: The anger of the Lord shall not return. Y'all, this this is the tribulation. Um, this is not a word that has already come to pass. This is end time prophecy. The anger of the Lord shall not return until He has executed y'all. Uh, whoo, Y'all, I'm telling y'all, I'm getting excited. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you why I got to highlight the word executed, because I actually saw a spirit of ex- uh, execution. <laughs> until he has executed, until he has performed the thoughts of his heart in the latter days, ye shall consider it perfectly. See, latter days, meaning end times. It hasn't come yet. Verse 21, I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. Because why? They did not spend time in God's counsel. And look at verse 22. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil ways and from the evil of their doings. God says, they spent. So this is, this is a false prophet, not because they, they weren't ordained. This is a false prophet because they no longer spend time or in the counsel of God. They copy and paste their words. Because God said, if they would have spent time in counsel with me, I would have gave them a right now word. Hallelujah. 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 You're going to have to, you're going to have to decipher it and you're going to have to use the gift of discerning the spirit. False prophet meaning, you know, this, is this a prophet of Baal? Or is this was was this an ordained prophet of God who no longer is in the council of God? Because there's two types that the Bible mentions. Hallelujah. I have not sent these prophets. But if they had stood in my council, you can't stand in God's council unless you've been called by God. Prophets of Baal will never stand in the council of God. He said, then if you would have, if they would have stood in my council, they would have caused my people to hear my words. Said, See, y'all, this is why sometimes I don't even send my flyer out until like an hour before because I'm still in the council of God. I'm still trying to hear what I'm supposed to teach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Am I God at hand, says the Lord, and not a God afar off? He said, I'm right here. <laughs> you can come to me and get a right now word. I'm not that far. Y'all got to go back and read chapter 23. It's a lot. Um, 
The vision of the wild beast of Daniel chapter 7. If, if some of y'all who can't see the image, it's a um, picture of the four beasts that Daniel 7 prophesied. Out of the four, I've seen two. I've seen the lion first. That, and, and in fact, I didn't know the order until today. But the lion in Daniel 7 is actually mentioned first. I've seen the lion. The second one that I saw was the bear. And the, the second thing, Daniel 7, is the bear. Oh, Jesus. The third, I'm sorry, I said I've seen two. I've seen three. The third one, which is a recent one that i just seen, was the third one that has, the, he, the Bible says he stands, he has the face or the appearance of a man, the heart of a man, so he can think and reason like a human, but he has a body of a beast. And he's able to stand on his hind legs. This is what I saw, y'all. And the, and the person who gave life to him, there was a man that um, skinned him. Ooh, gee, I don't have time to go into all of this tonight because it's a lot, and, and I'm excited about it because I'm a I'm a seeing prophet, so I'm in my lane. Like this is this is what I do, so I'm excited. My heart is just leaping because this is what I was born to do to, to teach on prophetic stuff, stuff that I'm seeing. Um, and so I'm gonna tell y'all really quickly this. Uh, it's a collaboration of three dreams. I'm not going to tell each dream individually, but it's a collaboration of three dreams. There was a dream where I was waiting on a lower platform. I don't, don't ask me. I don't know where I was. All I know is I was waiting on an elevator. And in the dream, this man that was my husband was coming down for me. And in the dream, he, I, I, he was on the elevator. He was taking the elevator to go down to come get me. And I was waiting for him. But he got into a battle on the elevator with a demon. Now, um, in the dream, I knew it, I knew it was the Holy Spirit. I knew it was the Holy Spirit. Um, I knew it was the Spirit of Jesus. He asked me as he was battling with this demon. He asked me, um, first of all, there was a phone. You know, phone is a communication. He that he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. There was a phone on the elevator. That had that needed battery, and in the dream it needed four really really big thick batteries. There was a four pack of batteries, but one was missing. So the the phone took three batteries. And when he put the when he when he put the batteries in the phone, he called to me, and I didn't have a phone, but yet I was responding in my spirit. He said, "Do you love me?" And I said, "Yes." And he said. Will you always be my wife? And I said, yes. And he said, even to the end of times, will you be my wife? And I said, yes. I couldn't figure out why he kept asking me that. And so when I, he needed to, he needed me to reassure that I was his and he was mine. Because right after the third time and I said, yes, he fought this beast for me. He fought this Thank demon you. for me. Thank he you, put Lord. Knife, hallelujah. He put the knife in this demon, right? And, and him and the demon was but him and the demon was wrestling. And so when I got to the elevator, when it finally came to me, the demon was on the elevator bleeding, but, but my husband was gone. And so in the dream, I picked up the knife, the same knife that my husband had. I picked it up, right? And the demon began to talk, y'all, bloody and everything. He, he looked at me like, who taught you how to yield that knife? And I said, my husband did. And I took the knife and I put it in the I put the I put the knife in the belly of the demon. Yo, what I pulled what I pulled out of that demon's belly was a chip. A little a little small chip. And I woke up and I said, Lord, what's this chip in the belly of the enemy? Something is getting ready to be released and God said, I'm revealing it to you first. Right? So that was technology. That that represents technology. That's something that plugs into a technology uh device, right? And so in, in, in the next dream, there was, a, there was this beast on a table that, w that was being skinned. I think Daniel talks about um, the one who gives it life, the, the one who gave it life, but he had a sword stuck in one of his sides. I seen the man skinning the, the, the fur or the skin of this beast, right? And he was, laying, he was laying like a human, straight, not like an animal. And then he, he sat up, and I told the man, I said, well, look. Now, you told me <laughs> that this thing was dead. How is it he's alive? He said, oh, no, his body just in shock. His body just, um, 
you know, the body is going through shock because I because I cut it up. I said, no, he, the devil is a lie. He, he, he's alive. And then the thing got up off the table, y'all. Got up off the table and began to walk towards me and the woman. Uh, the woman was on my right side. There's another scripture. And, and he talks about um, the angels holding your right hand. This, this woman was on my right side. And I said, well, he better not fall on me. And he better not touch me. As soon as I said that, he dropped on the side of the woman. And 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 the lady, you know, she she got up, she pushed me up, and I ran. I looked back for her, and she was gone. And so when I kept on running, this beast was behind me, y'all. And when I got outside, he was so tall, like eight feet tall. And he was standing on his hind leg at the face of a human, but the body of like a buffalo or ox or something. And he said, well, wh why don't you call on the angels to help you? Lord Jesus, I called on angels, y'all. I sure did. I <laughs> called on them angels. I ain't about to fight you. <laughs> and so um, and the, third, the third piece that I saw was a spirit of execution. I'm not going to go into that one right now because that's, that's for a later time. But I had to, um, I, I watched him execute a woman that was under my covering. And so immediately, what, this is what I wanted to say earlier. When I said the, 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 the anointing of Ishakar is going to cause you to know when to go in, how to go in, and how to go out. Um, this, this demon was coming in, and so the Lord took me out the back door. Ooh, Jesus, hallelujah. I went out the back door. So I had a strategy as to how to get away. These are the anointings that I'm seeing that God is releasing. And that, the only thing that lines up with what I'm seeing is these scriptures. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. So God must be doing something. The book of Daniel, y'all got to go into seven, and we may, we may do it next week. I don't know. It depends on how God lead me. But Daniel 7 talks about the three beasts, and then the fourth beast. And then he talks about the ancient of days. The fourth beast is slain. Oh, Jesus. Um, and, but but there's one thing that I want you to see. Go back and read Revelation 13. Do y'all see this picture? It's introducing meta, social in the metaverse. You see how they look? They look digitally. He looks digitally. And these are pictures. You can pull them up. You can see them anywhere. They're digital. Revelation 13, 14 through 15 is talking about a digital lookalike. Oh, Jesus. The mark of the beast being made where we can see it digitally. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. And after making this digital lookalike, the humankind builds the sound so he can sound like any one machine. I don't know if y'all seen this. Um, y'all have to look it up. But it's Will Smith, and he was introducing a robot. And he was at, he was hitting on the robot, y'all. He was asking the robot out on a date, and the robot was like, "Well, no, I just want to be your friend." And it, I mean, it had the personality of a human. And so Will Smith asked the robot, "Are why do you classify yourself as a woman?" She said, "Well, I'm a robot. I'm neither male nor female, but I I I um, classify more to a woman." Woo! Mm -hmm. This is a robot talking. Mm -hmm. She sound like a woman. Y'all got to look this stuff up. I cannot make this stuff up. She, she, I mean, and he went to kiss her. And she said, oh, no. Mm -hmm. she said, I don't see you like that. She turned him down. Mm -hmm. He was like, oh, I got turned down by a robot. But Revelation 13 talks about that. They're going to make it sound like, oh, she's, it's a lot of revelation, y'all. Mm -hmm. And you need the anointing. You need the anointing of Ishakar to know the signs of the times. You need this stuff. Now, last thing, last thing, when you log in on Facebook, there is a logo, and the logo is the infinity symbol, right? And the infinity symbol is found, now Revelation 13 also talks about a mark, that this mark, that how are you going to get people to engage in this mark? It has to be something that they can, that they can relate to. What what thing on earth is made that everybody can relate to? Technology. Mm -hmm. Now, in the dream with the bear, there was a little boy by my side. Now, this is significant because the next day when I woke up on the news, I found out Meta 
was under the technology, the, 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 the company Meta. I mean, you just launched, what, yesterday? And already you under investigation. That's a red flag. But you just launched yesterday, like an hour ago, and you on the news under investigation? Why are you under investigation? Y'all can look this up, too. It's public news. They are under investigation for the slaughter of children. Instagram, Instagram, Facebook has been targeting. They said their target focal point is children and young adults. And so they asked him on the news, well, what make you think you're going to get anything out of him? What make you think he's going to get in trouble? Or what make you think he's going to confess anything? He said, well, we're not that far yet. Right now we're just conducting investigations. We want to know, we want to sit down with the founder, Mark Zuckerberg, and we want to know, did he know? I mean, come on, anybody that hosts a conference, anybody that hosts a party, anybody that hosts a show, anybody that launched a product, you already got your vision board set up. Yeah, he knew. You know what you want to take place after you launch this thing? So not only is that symbol representing metaverse, that symbol also represents the Leviathan cross. So this is a mark that you're going to see frequently. I'm just saying I'm not teaching on no conspiracy therapy, uh, conspiracy theories. I'm just telling you what I'm seeing. <laughs> Hallelujah. I can't ignore this stuff, nor can I make it up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So tonight, y'all, I just want to pray on releasing Mr. Carr anointing, the Gadite anointing, the Zebulun anointing, and the Benjamin anointing. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because this is something, um, oh, Sister Carla said the recon and military. Yeah, they, recon, explain that. Explain that, Sister Carla. What, they, what do they do? When we um, would deploy, we would reach up, go up into a certain point before we would go on to that land. Certain people, um, like usually the, the head, the leadership, um, I was one of the drivers, and I would go on the recons with them and drive them around the land, you know, basically just to see what's out there to just, so that they decided where they were going to um, pitch tents, um, you know, what, what they were going to do, how they were going to set up that area. So they would survey it and see what was there. Oh, okay. Ooh, Jesus. They, that's on the front line. They had to, that means they had to go see, scout it out, and then come up with a strategy as to how we can go in. How the rest yeah. of the team can go in. Yeah. Yes. Hallelujah. So the thing about these three anointings, y'all, is that they will not. We will not be limited to just one. But I mean, these four anointings is that you are going to have all of them, just as the tribes of Israel work together to do the will of God. So will these three anointings. I mean, these four anointings. They will work together to enable this remnant of believers to do the will of God. They're going to, you're going to need to rely on all four of these anointings just to make it through the end times, just so that you don't fall trapped of the things that you're going to see emerging. Hallelujah, Jesus. Um, so one of the things that we're going to pray tonight, and I'm just, you know me, God, give, he, give us these, he give us these nuggets, these keys. Uh, so I say unto you, as the Holy Spirit has said unto me, wait on the Lord, right? Wait on the cloud to move first. Wait on the cloud to move first. Just because you're seeing what you're seeing does, does not mean it's a call to react or to respond. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's right. Hallelujah. It's a call to remember. Bring, bring it back to your remembrance so you don't forget. Lord, bring it back to my remembrance when I need it. Wait on the cloud to move first. Do not move ahead of the cloud and do not get left behind after the cloud has moved. When the cloud moves, it is time to go. Y'all, and I'm telling you, that's another symbol. If you're dreaming of a cloud, um, I had two people tell me that they saw me in a cloud. Um, and I came to them and told and was teaching them how to pray. When you start dreaming of clouds, you wait on it to move now, and you watch who also who he bringing in the cloud to you. You watch, because not only did Moses say, look, unless this cloud go before us, we're not going nowhere. But it's also in the New Testament um, as part of symbols of the end times, the cloud. There's going to be the Spirit of God is going to come in these clouds. But remember, everything God has, has, has prophesied, Satan wants to counterfeit it. 
God has a God has a new kingdom, a new place for all of us, a new Jerusalem. And so, what has Satan done? He wants to he wants to create a metaverse, Ooh, Jesus. a digital universe, because he cannot create an a, a actual kingdom. Hallelujah. So he has to do a digital one, a false one, a, one of imagination. Right. Hallelujah. Number two, follow every detail of God's instructions. Y'all, I'm telling you, in my, in, in, in my visions and dreams, God is telling me, okay, you hide the children. Hide them here. Make sure they're covered good. No, that's not a good spot. Move them over here. Now you go over here. Pack this bag. Take it over here. Everything is instruction, instruction, instruction. And you got to do it to the T because one wrong move. Ooh, Jesus. Follow every detail of God's instructions. Whatever God is telling you, write it down. Don't just don't rely on God to bring it back to your remembrance because he also says uh, write the vision. Make it plain so that he who reads it, it they can run. Ooh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Number three. Uh, whenever Israel went into a battle or moved their camp, God instructed them to move in a specific order behind the cloud so that Judah, <clears throat> Issachar, and Zebulun always moved ahead of the tabernacle in the same way. You're going to have instruction to, to get around this cloud, to get around the things that are coming. God's going to give you clarity, instruction, strategy. But he's also going to direct you. He's going to put an angel beside you. He's going to put that cloud there. You're going to have help. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And lastly, number four, everything I've done so far has been in fours. Number four, just as the presence of the Lord returned to the tabernacle after the Israelites moved, the end time church or the end time ecclesia will also usher in the return of the Lord. Woo! And the beginning of the millennial reign. There's going to be such a rejoicing. Hallelujah. Numbers 1036. Oh, Lord, come back to 10,000 of Israel's numbers. Come back, oh, Lord, to the thousands. Hallelujah. That's what Moses said in the book of Numbers. So, Father God, tonight I pray. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I repent of my sins, oh, God, any, any open doors that I may have that will cause me not to release these anointings. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, I pray right now for your people. My God, I pray that even in the night you will, you will give them instruction. Father, I pray that you will give them clarity. I pray that the cloud will, will be there, that you will be that cloud, that you will give them instructions, directions, that whichever way you go, Father, they will go also. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I pray the prayer of um, uh, First Chronicles 12. Hallelujah, where David and the man were speaking, and he said, are you for me or are you not? Father, I pray right now that they will have the gift of discerning of spirit to know the people that are for them and the people that are against them. Yes, Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, I pray that the, the, the helpers, the Ezars that you, are de, that you are delegating to them will be divine helpers, skilled in all manner of war. Woo, Jesus. Hallelujah. That, Father, I declare, verse 17, that they will have plenty of provision. Yeah. I declare, verse 40, oh God, that they will have, the, they will have the, the supplements and the supplies that they need, even when the, the enemy says you cannot buy. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father. We declare and decree right now, Hosanna be lifted up in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Father, because it says they were at battle, but the people were full of joy. There is no way we can go in battle and be weary about it. There's no way we can go in battle and be successful and we just, we're vexed about it. Father, there's no way we can go in battle and be victorious and we're going and grieved in our spirit. But Father, we declare and decree that we will have joy, unspeakable joy, as we go into the fire, as we go into the front line, as we go in in the woods, as we go into the wilderness, as we go into these places, even in the spirit realm, Father, where it seems like we're in isolation, Father, but that we're not in isolation, we're in separation. Hallelujah, Father, we thank you that we are saved by your grace. Father, we thank you that you are using us. We thank you that you will do nothing except you reveal it to us. We thank you, oh God. It is a privilege to be your C and I. It is an honor.
honor to be your hearing ears. It is an honor to be a vessel. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. God, we give you glory. We declare and decree. Father, it said the Issachar anointing was not only just on one man, but it went down the bloodline. So, Father, we declare and decree that even if it's not on us, that, Father, it will trickle down to those that we are raising, those that are in our covenant, those that are under our covering, those that are in our bloodline, those that are in our household, those that we are mentoring. Father, those that are in our in, our, in covenant, oh, God, those that are in camp. Father, your word in uh, in First Chronicles said that, they, that the, the tribe of Benjamites, came and they were in the fort with David. Father, those that are in the fort with us. Woo, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those that are in the fort, oh God, will have the will have this anointing. Those in the fort with us, oh God, will even have peace because we have peace. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Father, we just glorify you. We thank you. We give you praise. We count it all joy, trials and tribulations. Because we know that, Father, you are coming for a people that are, that are working, that are waiting for you, that are hungry for you, hallelujah, that are crying out for you, Father, that are sealed in your seal, that have been sealed by the blood of the Lamb. Your word says that the moment we came and gave our life to Christ, that from the moment we believed that we were sealed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Father, I declare and decree that everything attached to me is sealed. I declare and decree that what my hands are touching, because your word in Deuteronomy 28 and 5 says that my storehouse is, is blessed. In Deuteronomy 28 and 1 says that you will cause your rain to, to, to fall on my land, that you will cause that you will bless the works of my hands. Hallelujah, Jesus, that you will open up the good treasure, that heavens will open up unto me, that I am the, the lender and not the borrower. Father, I stand on these words and your promises. Father, activate our eyes in the spirit realm. Hallelujah. That we will see, that we shall see your glory, that we shall see the things that you are doing, that we shall see the things that are yet to come. Father, just as you told uh, John in chapter 4 of Revelation, come up so I can show you the things that are hereafter. Oh, Jesus. We declare and decree that we shall be a revelator for your word, that we shall be a scribe to write down the word, that we shall be a witness. Hallelujah. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah.